the concept of today class is the classical theory of employment or classical theory of income determination uh, in the exam they can ask the classical theory right Crit critically examine the classical theory of employment or classical theory of de income determination last i think uh, one year they can ask critically examine the classical theory of employment so what is the classical theory so that means their output and income or output or employment how it is defined right so what is the classical theory generally in an economics there are two approaches to discuss the how the output and income is determined okay so that means previous class we discussed the national income concept right various concept of the national income that is one question which i already discussed the continuation of that if we know the total national income sometimes the national income or the output will change or the due to the change in the level of different factors so what are the factors to determine the entire the national income and entire the output right in that case there are two classical theories one is the classical approach another uh, one, is, one is the classical approach another one is keynesian approach which we are discussing so today we are going to discuss the classical theory approach who is the classical economist the classical economist that is jb say adam first the father of the economist adam smith you know very well right so adam smith jb say js mill and other classical economist and what the theory the classical economist stressed the free market mechanism right how it is uh, uh, work in the market to change in the level of total output and employment to change in the any factors okay so if you are discussing this theory entire theory what the classical theory is right so here you can suppose to start with the term the classical right so this is the book of richard t froyen the record by the delhi university okay so the first term the classical is the period dominated by the work adam smith that is the wealth of nations 1776 and david ricardo principles of political economy 1817 and john stuart mill j s mill principles of political economy the second term neo classical period it all played marshall okay there are three terms one is the classical another one is neo classical period another one is modern period okay in economics classical approaches the classical period that is the adam smith david ricardo jb say js mill and so on. neo classical economist alfred marshall the theory in his principles of economics 1920 acp go these are the classical economist and another one the modern economist that is the keynes keynes and milton friedman acp uh, uh, irving fisher these are the modern economist all are they discuss about what is the output and employment to determine the different factors what is the point so if you are talking about what is the classical revolution or the classical theory is right so in the classical theory is emerged that the body of economic doctrine known as mercantilism so generally what the classical theory is first we can to go for the uh, direct uh, theory actually this is the theory okay the classical economist has stressed the the free, free market mechanism this is the word what the classical theory the classical theory is to describe how the income and output is fluctuated or the determine the factors are right so generally classical economist has to stress that the free market mechanism would work to provide markets for any goods that were produced got it that means whatever it is the market is freely exchange for goods one to another goods they can produce freely free market mechanism okay free market mechanism so the classical doctrine was that aggregate production is given the quantity of output will generate a sufficient demand for that output that is by the the factors of production so the classical economist has to stress the the aggregate demand 
what is the aggregate demand the availability of the or the demand for the goods and services in the economy that is the output you can say right the classical economist has to describe the the and uh, entire the output or the entire the aggregate demand is that is the sum of the demand for goods and services in the economy right so already maybe uh, we learned that what is the production function right production function is the functional relationship between right output and input factors output is what is the production input factors means what are the factors to influence to produce the goods and services so entire the theory the classical theory is how the output or the production is taken place what are the factors to influence the aggregate demand or the aggregate output so what are the assumptions or what are the two features of the classical theory is so these are the two theories dear students you can follow me right the classical theory assumptions there are two assumptions here one is the classical economic stressed the role of real as opposed to the monetary factors in the determine output and employment that means the classical economist has to determine the there is only one factor that is labor because initial stage classical economy means 1930s 1930s means right uh, 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 in the initial stage there is no other factors to influence more got it the point so in the initial stage 1930s labor is the only factor to influence the entire output or entire the aggregate in income got it the point so that means in the initial we have four factors we already discussed the previous chapter what are the factors labor land capital organization got it so labor is the one factor land is the another factor capital organization out of the four in the initial classical economist has to stress at the opposed to monetary factors here it is written clearly opposed to the monetary factors to determine the output and employment means opposite of monetary monetary what are the monetary factors money capital organization and remaining factors are that is the monetary factors monetary factors means the money related factors money related factors not in in, in classical economist money related factors in keynesian uh, factors actually keynesian theory factors what are the factors what factors to influence the output and output other factors are capital organization and so so on only the one factor that is the labor is the only one factor to determine the entire output and employment that is the one first assumption simply written you have to note out the point that the classical economist stressed the right the real fa real factor okay the real factor is that is the labor labor is the only one factor to determine the entire output and employment one point second point is the classical economist stressed the right the self adjusting tendency of the economy like what is the self adjust adjusting tendency of the economy the government policies to ensure an adequate demand for output were considered by classical economists to be unnecessary and generally harmful what are the self adjusted uh, tendencies in a, in an initial stage in the classical economist right there is no other factor to influence in the economy only one factor the labor according to that labor okay availability of the labor resources we have to produce more output or less output that is self adjusted in the economy so we turn that according to these two assumptions what are the assumptions classical economy stress the real factor that is the labor second factor is self adjusted self adjusted tendencies of the economy according to that the classical economy stress of the relationship between the central relationship in the classical model is aggregate production function so that entire aggregate production or uh, entire the output is defined by only one labor other factors are remaining constant got it the point so the classical economist has to define the production function is it summarize that relationship between total inputs and total output assuming a given technology so the classical economist production function is y is equal to 
function of k intercept n so here y is the output where y is equals to output k bar is the stock of capital stock of capital means in, in the initial stage there is a minimum level of the investment like a cap, plant equipment infrastructure whatever you can say and n n is what quantity of homogeneous labor input what is the point this is the one factor in the classical economy that is that is also we can call as real factor what is the point so n is the real factor that is the homogeneous labor in, of input homogeneous means in terms of the quality in terms of the work in terms of everything is same all the labors are equal that is the homogeneous of labor input so k is constant whatever it is the plant equipment the capital is constant only the one to change that is the labor input to change the output will change that is you can call it classical production function so the classical theory is the short run period theory why it is short run period in the initial stage only one labor we are using short run period in the long run maybe you can use other factors but we are talking about in the initial stage that the classical theory 1930s so that the entire output is depend upon the homogeneous of labor so more labor will produce more output what is the output will taking place how what is the output to change sometime it is increasing sometime it is declining sometime it is diminishing uh, depend upon the labor productivity right and availability of the homogeneous of labor so the short run theory is the uh, sorry the classical theory the short run period the output varies slowly with various in the labor input drawn from the fixed population according to the population the output is changed to change in the level of right the the labor inputs so here you can discuss in here so there is a table uh, 3.1 right 3.1 that uh, uh, fundamental relationship between change in the labor input and resulting change in the output holding other factor like capital stock constant so that is the y is equal to f k bar n okay so according to that equation y is equal to function of k bar n that is the production function of the classical theory how you can determine that labor to change to change in the output is got it so this is the table which indicate that the relationship between the output and input variables got it so here the output is y here the input is n how to change the labor input to change the output is that is the production function of the short run theory i hope you students you can understand right so in the short run initial stage if this is a to b a to g this is the some combination okay which we are taking in line a line b this is the all the combination in line a you can look into how many labor and what is the output is and there is a another column that is the mpn that is the marginal productivity of labor what is this marginal productivity labor mpn mpn is marginal productivity labor is the rate at which to, to to change in the one one labor to change in the output how much to change the labor to change in the level of output that is you can call mpn that is delta y delta m here it is written the change in output given a change in labor simply say mpn okay one by one we are discussing in this table so first if initial stage zero labor if zero labor output is zero obviously we don't have labor product labor factor okay and there is no output if you hide the labor hide the labor means hide the labor means we have the labor uh, one unit of labor how much you produce the output suppose 10 units of the produ production was taking place 10 units right we are producing what is the point and if you hide the one more unit of labor here two unit labor we are put it and uh, if you produce the 20 first keep it with these two lines okay two two, two columns and uh, if you hide the third unit of labor what is the output the output is increasing 28 okay obviously and fourth labor the output is increasing 33 and if you hide the fifth labor 
the output is increasing 30 fold up to fifth levels the output is increasing trend what is the point earlier 0 10 20 28 33 34 beyond that in the initial stage if you use the or if you hide the one more unit of labor input the output will be declining why because in initial stage whenever you are uh, you are working you will produce more output certain period of hours at the certain period of time you are producing the output will automatically decline certain period same thing here also if you if you increase the one more unit of labor right so the output will automatically decline how it is suppose here you can look at it okay how it is happening see look at it. the output is increasing but in the initial stage output is increasing at constant level and after that the output is increasing at diminishing returns at a decreasing level and output is decline uh, declining totally negative that output okay look at here look at here in only in line a zero unit of labor head the total output is zero in line b if you had the one unit of labor n is head the total output is 10 into what is the marginal productivity delta y the change in the one one labor to another labor is one to two the change in is one labor and output is zero to ten the change is ten so delta y upon by delta n delta y what this is the change in the level of output 10 minus 0 that is the 10 upon by 1 minus 0 1 so 10 by 10 by 1 that is the 10 10 is what mpn marginal productivity of labor what it so this is 10 and third labor so second labor you can look at uh, second labor you can look at second labor they can produce 20 units of the output okay so what is the difference is 20 to 10 10 only and here only one labor if we had the one unit labor the output will same 10 only the change in the output is 10 only so the mpn is also 10 how it is 10 10 upon by 1 okay so here the output is increasing at at constant level so this is the 10 10 so constant level it is increasing this is mpn and third labor if you, you use the another more unit of labor you produce the 28 so what are the differences between these two earlier 20 now 28 so 28 minus 20 so 8 so 8 is the mpn so 28 of uh, 8 upon by 1 that is the 8 so it is explained here here it is explained on c two workers are high total output is 20 so mpn delta y by delta n is 20 minus 1 upon by 1, so 10 upon by 10. And third level, if we have the third worker here, so total output is 28, so 8 upon by 1, so 8. Okay, so this is the what? Area of diminishing returns to scale. What is the area? So here you can look at it. Diminishing return what? The output is diminishing. See, look at it. Increasing the output is increasing but earlier it is decreasing level of uh, decreasing level it is increasing now it is decreasing level output is increasing sometimes some students confuse that sir the output is increasing dear student i can say that one more unit of labor input could can increase earlier output is 10 to 20 the difference is 10 10 to 8 10 to 28 8 difference 28 to 3 33 only 5 difference so this difference is this MPN. So what is happening? Output is increasing, but that output is earlier constant level that after the diminishing, after that is going to negative. Why it is negative? So if you had the five unit of labor, 34, you can output produce. So 34 minus 33, and one, one. If you had beyond that labor, 60 unit of labor, so the output will automatically diminish or negative. 34 to 32. So 32 minus 34 minus 2 here. So this is what what we are discussing. The MPN. What is the MPN? The change in output 
given a change in labor is so it is diminishing so what we are conclusion here so this is the diagram according to that table okay according to that table according to the classical theory if you hire the labor here right output is produced this, this much level if you hire the one more unit of labor input the output is increasing in the initial stage the output is increasing at at constant level and if you have after beyond the some labor the output is diminishing if you increase one more unit of labor inputs after five labor right so that uh, output is going to negative that we are discussing here okay suppose x axis is dear students we discuss that uh, labor inputs that is also you can call as employment okay employment means the number of homogeneous of labor how much how many members you are using how many numbers we are we are employed got it how many members we are employed employed means how many members we are working as a labor homogeneous of labor so employment is increasing the output is increasing initial stage it is increasing at constant level so that's why we can say that this is the constant returns to scale what is the constant returns that uh, the change in the uh, variable factor to change in the level of output factor so that is the constant returns to scale so this is constant because increasing level of out, uh, labor output is also constant level it is increasing and uh, one more unit of labor input is increasing the output will increasing at decreasing rate that diminishing returns okay how there is a number where in this table according to that only according to this table we are we are rather that uh, graph actually okay labor this is x axis you can take this and y axis output you can take one diagram second diagram labor and this mpn okay what is the so look at here so first table is the production function right short term production function we are draw short term production function is the functional relationship between the functional relationship between the output and labor input labor input is so this x axis is output is y axis is so lab, the function the functional relationship between output and input factors so input factor is homogeneous product here look at y is equal to function of k bar n so this equation dear student this diagram the equation it shows that the short term production function according to the classical theory approach according to the classical theory approach the production function y is equal to function of k bar n so y is the output n is the labor input so more unit of labor the output will increase but initial stage constant level after the diminishing after the negative this is the negative right so according to this you can draw this this another diagram marginal productivity of labor okay so x axis you can denote it to labor inputs and y axis you can denote it to mpn what is the pn the change in output to change in labor what is the point so how it is one unit of labor the output is 10 so that's why b is the 10 because a is nothing because a is zero labor zero mpn so that's why a you cannot denote here what is the point so one unit of labor 10 units of the output right and second unit of labor right again 10 unit of the output production right and uh, third unit of labor 8 and fourth unit of labor 5 and uh, uh, this fifth unit of labor 1 okay and sixth unit of labor it's going to minus 2 that's why this diagram is going to negative situation negative so the look at here the this is the mpn per mpn means the marginal productivity of labor per. the marginal productivity of labor here it is written marginal productivity of labor
Yes, there is some network issue. So we are talking about here, right? We are talking about what is the marginal productivity of labor? So what is the marginal productivity of labor? The addition to total output due to addition of a unit of labor. That, that means how much to change in the level of labor to change in the output. How much if you increase one more unit of labor, output is also increasing that much level of the output. So that additional unit of labor you can increase, the additional unit of output is changed. That you can call the marginal productivity of labor. Why we are discussing this? Because the classical theory to determine that uh, aggregate demand, right? Aggregate supply, where both aggregate demand and aggregate supply equal one particular point, that is you can call it classical theory of income determination equal to M point. So here we are discussing classical theory of income determination, demand curve, labor demand curve. This is the marginal productivity of labor curve. So how you can say labor demand, so this is the labor demand, okay? Suppose, suppose if you are talking about this entire, this, this one you can say that the availability of the labor and how it is production was taking place. So employment is what? This is the availability of the labor supply. Okay, so how it is production was taking place. Coming to the point, what is the labor demand is? What is the labor demand is student? So labor demand curve, you can discuss about how much the people are work on the basis of wage rate. So labor demand is depend upon what is the wage rate is. Wage rate, how you can denote it? So this is the wage rate, W by P. Okay, W by P is the wage rate. Why it is wage rate? Just you can come to the point here. Why is W by W by P is the wage rate? Because in the initial stage, right, the firms are perfect competitive market. What is the perfect competitive market in the microeconomics we studied? What is the perfect competitive market? Large numbers of the buyers and sellers, they can produce homogeneous product. So their, out, their goal is maximum profit, maximize their profit. What is the point? So uh, in the perfect competition, all the producers are the price takers. Whatever the price they must have to take, they must have to accept it. So that same thing, the classical theory is applicable in the perfect competition. Whatever it is, the price is available, they must have to take. Price means whatever the wage is available, the labor must have to take the labor. Okay, homogeneous labor, they can take the wage rate at the level of the price. That is W by P means the wage rate at the level of the price, W by P. What is the point? So what is the marginal cost? Marginal cost of the ith form is MC. Okay, so equal to money divided by the marginal productivity labor form. So we define the output produced by the instrument unit of the labor employee, MPN. So how you can divide the MPN? So marginal cost. The producer are always looking into what is his cost of the production and what is the wage rate and what is the labor production. What is the point? So MC is equal to W by MPN. So we can define that, uh, that equation. So P is what? P is equal to marginal cost. Marginal cost means whatever the cost was taking place at the level of the production. So that is equal to whatever the price of the particular product is. What is the point? So P is equal to MC. So MC is equal to W by MPN. If you replace the P is equal to MC, so MC is equal to P. So P is equal to W by MPN. So finally, MPN is equal to W by P. So MPN means the marginal productivity of labor is depends upon W by P. If you still confused, don't confuse the students. MP, I'm discussing about this diagram only. So MPN is equal to W by P. Why W by P? The labor which they are, the labor which they are produced the output on the basis of whatever he's earning the wage rate. Wage rate means W by P. Wage rate, W by P means the wage rate at the level of the price. MPN is equal to W by P. Okay, that is the labor demand curve. You can say labor demand curve. So look at here. So MPN is equal to 
what is the labor demand curve the mpn is the labor demand curve so if the wage rate is 3 rupees the people are working at this much level so 8 is the mpn mpn means wage rate got it the point so employment is here x axis is y axis is real wage rate right so at the level of the wage rate a there are three labors they are willing to work their work what is the point so at the level of wage rate 10 there are two workers they are here or they are working willing to work that is 1 and 2 if the wage rate is 5 there are four workers they are willing to work the wage rate is 2 this much level if wage rate is 1 1 wage rate is 0 no one is working if beyond you can there is no one is willing to work because wage rate according to wage rate they are head what is the point so the real wage rate and employment is negative relationship more employment the wage rate will automatically decrease so output will more employment the output will automatically increase certain level of the labor the output will going to diminish i hope uh, you students are understand so labor demand curve is what is the slope of the labor demand curve the slope of the labor demand curve is left to right downward slope left to right downward slope here we are discussing labor demand curve labor demand curve means the classical theory demand curve the classical demand curve theory is m mpn mpn what marginal productivity of labor marginal productivity of labor is the wage rate is the demand curve labor demand curve. so that is equal to w by p that is the real wage rate suppose we are the labor side suppose we are the laborers we are servicing something we are producing something we have to get the some wage rate that wage rate is always to calculate at the level of the price because price is sometime it is change according to the price our wage rate is fixed what is the point so that's why wage rate change labor input will automatically labor input change the output will automatically change so finally the labor demand curve is downward slope left to right this is what what we are considering next labor supply what is the labor supply curve the labor supply curve it depends upon availability of the labor so labor is the only service supplied by the individual worker who is the owners of the labor we are the laborers okay individual worker each and every individual worker have their individual right labor sources suppose you are the labor i am the one labor another one is the labor we are the also work labor because you are provide the services right like that so in the classical economist assume that individual attempt to maximize the satisfaction so this is the classical economist has to stress that or to define that individual labors has to maximize their utilities or the satisfaction depends upon their real need so the level of satisfaction or level of utility is depends upon their positively on both real income what is this real income the real income means is getting income levels satisfaction how you can get satisfaction more working more wage rate more real income more satisfaction that is the only na how he get the more income he working more hours if he work more hours he get more income so more level of the labor input you can get the more satisfaction okay but sometime certain period of time the labor certain period out of the 20 we have 24 hours right out of the 24 hours how many hours we are work in real life maybe 8 hours or 10 hours or 12 hours depends upon the labor got it the point so out of the 24 hours how many hours you are work according to law according to labor uh, uh, laws so if you the worker has to work only 8 hours per day you must have to work beyond that they can work they can get the extra wages or extra bonus or benefits as well the minimum the 8 hours is the minimum hours you can work okay so if you want to more utility more real income they must have to more hours so out of 24 8 hours working means what is the point out of 24 8 hours working means remaining how many hours is the rest hour that is 18 hours 18 9 16 hours sorry 
16 hours laser hour. Eight hours is working hours. 16 hours is the laser hour. So the trade off. Trade off means if you work more, you must have to giving up of laser hour. So the trade off between laser hour and working hours. So that's why. Therefore, the trade off between two goals because income is increased by work and with reduced availability of the laser time. That means if more income, you work more hours. That means less laser hours. If you if you more laser hours, less work, less income. Got it? So the direct relationship between working hours and the work income, indirect relationship between laser hours and income. So more working, more income, less laser hours, less working, less income, more laser hours. That we are discussing here. Okay. So suppose example, example also they can discussing in this book. So I will uh, uh, Richard T. Froyan book you can refer. Okay, soft copy is available to your students. So how you can explain in the classical theory actually? They asked the 12 marks question. How you can explain? First, the classical economists are uh, Adam Smith, J.B. Say, Smith. So the classical economists trust that free market mechanism. There are two assumptions after that, right? Based on the two assumptions, the production function is aggregate production function defined. So the table, the figure. Now we are taking aggregate, sorry, uh, labor demand curve and labor supply curve. So this is the way we can write it in that exam. Okay, dear students. So, so labor demand curve, every labor supply we are discussing. So we are discussing labor supply curve. So suppose example in individual J allocate 24 hours period between laser hours and working hours and n, n, n s j n s means n s means n means homogeneous of labor s means supply homogeneous of supply of labor at a j form j means there is institution or organization whatever you can say individual supply of labor so figure 3.3 so there, there is a figure here you can look at it. now you can understand it easily. okay so this is the figure what is the figure here the trade off between income laser hours. What is the point? Second table, labor supply curve. How you can draw the supply curve? That is what we are discussing. Okay. So we are we are de described the labor supply curve on the basis of the relationship. Between income, working hours and leather hours. Got it? So according to that, how his real income or wage rate is. Suppose example. So this is what U1, U2, U3. This is his indifference curves. Maybe microeconomics people are studied. The curve lens, you can say. The curve lens, you can say indifference curve. U1, U2, U3. Here the explanation here you can get. So the figure 3.3, here I can see. Here uh, figure you can see. I can highlight it here, dear students. So look at it here. Figure 3.3 illustrate the choice facing the individual. On the horizontal axis, measure the hours of laser per day, that is the x-axis, and the maximum of hours is 24 hours. The horizontal interrupt where the individual choose to no labor, all laser hours is 24 hours. The number of hours work are uh, therefore 24 minus the number of hours of laser selected. Okay, if this combination you can look at here. So x axis you can total 24 hours means 24 hours zero means there is no zero weight. That means out of 24 hours, 24 hours laser hours. There is no working hours. There is no laser. More, more 24 hours laser. Hours. That's why wage rate is zero. Okay, if if more laser hour, if his laser hour is 18 hours the laser hour okay if laser hour is 18 hours means how many working hours dear students out of the 24 18 hours is the laser hours means six hours is the working hours if you work six hours 18 hours is laser hours what is his wage rate his wage rate is 48 got it the point 
so why it is 48 because out of 24 the wage is 2 rupees at the time at the level of the price w by p if the wage is 2 rupees got at the point so the people are working 6 hours 8 hours and later hours u1 what this is the trade off between u1 is the indifference curve. what is the indifference curve the combination of the two goods right or two variables which we are giving the same level of satisfaction indifference curve microeconomics were studied the the indifference curve shows the different combination of the two variables is given the same level of satisfaction so here the satisfaction is getting because a six hours is working 18 hours is the leisure hour so he get the wage is 2 rupees so 48 is his real income what is the point so again, again next point point a is so here next if he increase more working hours that means more working hours means leisure hours automatically decline suppose there is a 16 hours leisure hour earlier 18 hours the wage rate is 2 now they reduce the leisure hour 18 to 16 so this this line they reduce the leisure hour 18 to 16 so that so he is get the more working hours right out of 24 16 is the out of 24 16 is the leisure hour means remaining 8 hours got it 8 hours working day working day. so more working the work it get the real income is more because wage rate automatically increase wage rate is 3 rupees so that we can get the wage rate 22 rupees this is the real wage rate again out of 24 15 out of 24 15 means 9 hours is working so here 6 hours working 8 hours working 9 hours working and leisure hour 18 hours leisure hour 16 hours leisure hour 15 hours leisure hour so more leisure hours got it less working hours they get the wage rate is this much so more working hours more wage rate here six wage working hour so that wage rate is 48 and here working 8 and 72 here 9 so 96 so the trade off between what is the positive relation, relation between the uh, uh, income and uh, working hour working hours are real income positive relation more working hours more wage rate and real wage rate in leisure hour more le income less leisure hour more working hours so according to that according to wage rate two rupees wage rate so working hours is six where so this line what is the point so this all combination a b c a what so this is the his wage rate line and this is the indifference to interact particular point here and another wage rate is 3 so his real income is 72 the indifference curve is here the combination is here and another combination is here so abc is the the combination of the real wage rate and working and leisure hours so if the wage rate is 2 here hours of the work per day earlier 18 hours leisure hour here the working hours is 6 what is the point so 6 working hour he is getting two wage rate point a this combination and his working hours is 8 got it so 3 is the real wage rate working hours is 9 4 is the wage rate so more working hour more wage rate so positive relation between more labor working hours more wage rate that more employment will increasing wage rate will automatically increase and the trade off between labor hours and income what it so labor hours and wage rate Negative. Increasing level of leisure hour, decreasing level of wage rate. Increasing level of working hours, real wage rate is decreasing. So, what is the supply curve? So, more working hours, more wage rate. So, supply curve is upward slope. Upward slope. So, what will I have to explain here? So, where there is a, so this is the equilibrium of classical theory. Dear student, just note out. so what is the classical theory equilibrium the classical theory equilibrium a is where there is a demand labor demand and labor supply are equal particular point that is the equilibrium of output and employment so the following relationship have to be derived so this is the production function this is the labor demand curve 
for the labor supply for this is the output right output is y is equal to function of k bar n in the initial stage we are discussing so this is the labor demand nd means homogeneous of labor got it homogeneous of labor what is the homogeneous of labor nd labor demand curve so labor demand curve depends upon wage rate more wage rate more demand were demanded okay and ns what labor supply curve so labor supply curve is equals to same that is also wage rate w by p so ns what is where is the equilibrium point there is a aggregate demand and aggregate supply equal particular point that is you can call as classical theory equilibrium point equilibrium point so see look at here ns is equal to md okay determine output employment and real wages are equal particular point that is the ns is equal to nd so what we will have to explain here so this is the point the equilibrium level of labor input to equilibrium level of output is given by the production function so that uh, figure is here here the figure okay this we need to explain what is the classical theory equilibrium the classical theory equilibrium point is point a why where the aggregate demand curve equals to aggregate supply curve at particular point a so that is the classical theory equilibrium point so in this equilibrium point the equilibrium level of employment is or you can say the employment is n0 the output is w by p 0 this is the real wage okay so this is what the demand and supply curve okay the supply curve is upward slope that is the ns curve here is also at the level of the labor n0 the wage rate is w by p got it so n d is equal to function of w by p that is the demand curve and ns is equal to function of w by p so both are equal particular point this is the equilibrium level of employment so at this labor n0 means employment labor what is the output is so this is the, at the level of the n0 of the labor input the output is okay the output is y0 the output is okay so what is the classical theory equilibrium point at the level of the demand and labor equivalent particular point that point you can call as right so at the level of the employment or the labor input the output is y0 so this is what this is the the classical theory of labor input and labor output okay so dear student this is the answer what we are uh, suppose uh, right supposed to write an exam if they can ask the question like uh, what is the classical theory of income uh, critically examine the classical theory of employment so you have to write it this answer okay so this two diagram sometimes this equilibrium point to change either the change the labor demand curve change or either the labor supply curve change the equilibrium change okay so that means here the equilibrium point labor demand and labor supply sometimes labor demand change labor demand means demand curve is upward shift demand curve is leftward shift the equilibrium automatically change so wage rate is at the level of e so anyone can change the equilibrium change so this is what the classical theory the classical theory only one labor one factor only one factor to change the output to change that is the labor so labor input that is the employment you can say employment change the labor output change and the equilibrium level will automatically change so this is the Today's class and tomorrow we will discuss that you know Keynesian theory, modern theory of income determination. Uh, that is, uh, you can refer the another book, the Anubhuskis theory. This, this, this is the book actually. After this uh, uh, Keynes theory, we are discussing ISLM model. That is also more important. Thing. Okay. So yeah, I think I stop the class now today, and we go for any doubts and queries. I can check your. Uh, question and answer chat box so that i can answer you uh, if you have any doubt and any queries so please drop the message here. 
okay so that i can answer it. yeah hello uh, can you please uh, 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 able bernard ke reference book pdf books uh, ye wala last time mein bhej diya aapko material share kar ke pdf beta abhi bernard ke pehle wala mein Do you have any uh, uh, queries? Please let me know here. Okay. Yeah. Dear okay, student, do you have any queries? You can answer here. Otherwise, uh, we can discuss uh, the topic which you are reminding the topics. Okay. Yeah. Is there any doubt, Mr. Yeah. So, uh, if you have any doubt, just I can continue this. Okay. Uh, so, up to this, we are discussing classical theory, right? The classical theory of income determination, uh, where it is. Uh, if Uh, I today I couldn't take that uh, board actually because uh, yeah we will discuss this theoretical part. Okay, uh, so so this is what the classical theory income determination. In the classical theory income determination, so there is a demand for labor curve that is that this N D M P and N D curve, and uh, demand for supply curve this is the N S N S equals to W by P, and N D is equal to function of W by P M P N. so both are equivalent particular point that is you can call as wage rate okay at that wage rate the employment is taking place that is the labor was taking place this much level okay this labor was change wage rate change sometime demand change the wage rate is change sometime supply change the wage rate will automatically change suppose example earlier curve is mpn 1 right This is the one. Okay, if 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 labor demand is increasing, demand is increasing. If you hire the more labor, more labor, the labor demand curve is increasing. Demand increasing means producers has hired the more labor. They can produce the more output. So that they must have to increase the wage rate. More demand of the labor, they must have to get the more wage rate. So labor demand curve will shift to rightward. So rightward shift of the labor curve that will reflect to the wage rate is shifted to this much level W2. Got it? If supply curve is constant. If another, if right, wage rate is more. Uh, employ, employ, uh, labor employed is increased on more unit of labor. So the demand curve will shift to rightward. Then what will happen? The wage rate is this much more. What is the point? So N one is the only one point which they are producing the more labor input, but labor demand is increasing. But this zero level of the labor because supply is also same level, the change. Whatever the demand is happening, the same level of the supply is also same. That means there is no change in the supply and demand, so that uh, wage rate will automatically. increasing this much to this much we w1 to w2 and w2 to w3 so this is what we are uh, discussing okay so uh, this is the aggregate supply function aggregate demand function we already discuss right so what is the classical aggregate supply curve according to that okay so the classical aggregate supply is supply is always constant in the classical uh, theory why because because whatever the available to the supply right whether the wage rate is increasing or decreasing the supply is constant in the initial state okay in the modern year modern approach in the new classical approach output will increase to increase the level of labor supply what is the point other factors to influence that. other factors means the land increasing capital more increase and other factors are increasing so that automatically it will be increased. 
so uh, according to classical theory what is the aggregate supply curve the aggregate supply curve is so this is the or right horizontal axis right this is vertical axis okay the vertical classical aggregate supply curve reflect that uh, higher the value of the price level require the proportionate higher level of the money available sometimes they can ask the short answer question these students in this in this point that's why i'm just pressing here okay that's why that's why i'm discussing here okay yeah i stop the class now i stop the class now so yeah do you have any doubt let me instruct yeah i think uh, rajendra ji 